Y'all get ready? Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your teacups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey you guys, it's your girl T, and yes, I am back home in the Twin Cities, okay? I had a wonderful time in the ATL. I'm not gonna be here for too long, cause literally I'm leaving in a few hours to head to LA, okay? I literally made a pit stop to come home, say hey to the kids, get some more clothes, and I'm heading out to LA, and then I'll be back again in a few days. So I've been busy, but shout out to everybody I met in the ATL, everybody I ran across, all the cool ass celebrities I got a chance to meet and hang out with. Shout out to Jacob Lattimore, Sheree Winfield from the Real Housewives of Atlanta, we had a good old funky time. I met a lot of cool people out there. Shout out to Killer Mike, Dave Chappelle, Noriega from the Drink Champs. Oh my gosh, I had such a good time. I'm going to put together a whole video of my trip to ATL for a lot of you guys who want to see it. You guys will be able to check it out. But for now, one of the most requested videos that I got while I was on damn vacation was this whole drama that's going on. And once again, the beauty community has ran a damn muck, okay? Once again, there's new drama brewing in the beauty community. And you guys are really liking, you know, the fact that I'm talking about YouTubers and influencers. You guys have been giving me a lot of props on these videos because I keep it real. I'm unbiased. I just say what the hell I got to say and I keep it damn pushing, okay? So, for those of you guys who don't know, there's a lot of, you know, makeup drama brewing. What happens is that there's this company called Juvia's Place, okay? And let me say this for the record. I did not hear about them from Nikki Tutorials. I heard about Juvia's Place from my little sister. You guys know my little sister is like a slash, you know, makeup person. She does hair. She's a hair braider. Uh, she's also a physical therapist, but that's what she does on the side is makeup and hair. She is the girly girl of the family. She, like, took all the girly girl jeans. I'm the tomboy IT person of the family. So when I need, like, you know, beauty tips and tricks and stuff, my little sister to helps me out. Flawless. Love it. If they use a lot of concealer just to make it come on, but whatever. Yeah, no. Different things. It looks pretty. I don't. So usually when she does my makeup, one of her favorite palettes to use is the Juvie's Place palette. She also sent our mother a Juvie's Place palette for Christmas about a year ago. So she's been promoting Juvia's Place to us um, for you know for years now. Um, on top of Nikki's tutorials and a bunch of other people, right? What's going on is that Juvia's Place is basically launching their own makeup line, like foundation, contours, things like that. Okay, they're gonna have a wide shade range. You know, everywhere from you know white skin to brown skin to super dark you know stuff like that so what happened is that jeffree star everybody knows who jeffree star is by now if you don't you know what i'm saying he's the messy one on youtube um so jeffree star went out of his way to go and try on the makeup okay he went he bought it himself he went to alta beauty um he bought all the makeup and he decided to basically you know do a review and so a lot of people initially the rumor was is that uh juvia's place sent him this makeup and they had him on the PR list, but you know, Jeffree Star is very problematic. Um, he has a history of like racist comments and also belittling Jackie Ina and calling her a gorilla and everything else. So that's where a lot of the drama came in from, but that was debunked because if you guys watched Jeffree Star's video, he literally went to the store, he bought the foundation. He did not buy one, he bought several different colors and then he tried it on and it was Jeffree Star approved, okay? So Juvius was super boosted, super happy. Why? Because Jeffree Star has a big audience. You know, so they were really happy that he had shouted them out. He gave them, you know, approval. And folks started dragging Juvia's place, okay? They were really, really upset. Um, so, you know, Jackie also had a lot of things to say. Um, Alyssa Ashley had some things to say as well. So right now, it's going to be a lot of reading in this video. You know what I'm saying? I got my damn Mother Goose glasses, okay? Even though I don't wear glasses, is this is just to block out those damn blue lights when I edit. I will be putting this shit on, okay? There's a lot of damn shit to get to. So let's get to it. I look cute. I look cute. All right, let's go. So before I get to reading, um, if you guys do not know who Jackie Ina is, Auntie Jackie, 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 Jackie. Um, she's amazing. She's one of um, the few big black beauty influences, okay? She's been doing her thing for years. I watch her. We share the same skin tone. So I do watch her videos because when she tries on makeup, I can see how they will look on me. You feel me? So Jackie's been doing her things for years. And so she's been having issues, I guess, behind the scenes with Juvia's Place, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and read to you guys all 
these notes. Like I told you, I have my mother goose glasses on. Let me go ahead and put them on, okay? Check this out. Jackie starts by saying, months ago, I tweeted about makeup companies who don't give a damn about working with or cultivating relationships with black influencers at all until it's time for them to launch complexion products. Now look. Then she goes on to say, all skin folk ain't kin folk. I can't align myself with any brand, black owned or not, that purposely taunts their customers. It's not okay to use pro-black imagery to lure black dollars, only to step over them on the way to the top and reject them when you get there. Long before I publicly acknowledge why I don't support this brand, y'all already knew something was off. There are also a few why I don't support JP videos from smaller black influencers on YT. If you don't believe me, cool, then listen to them and make that call for yourself. Then she goes on to say, lastly, I ask, please don't allow this lady to be the representative for all Nigerians. I promise we all aren't like this. Don't mind her. <laughs> In my Ninja voice. Don't mind her, okay? Don't mind her. Don't mind what she's doing. <laughs> if y'all don't know, I'm Nigerian, Yoruba, Jackie's Nigerian, and so is Chi Chi, okay? <laughs> Back to the story at hand. So then um, what ends up happening is basically, honey, Chi Chi's ass done logged on to Twitter. She was like, hold on now. Y'all not going to be talking shit about me, bitch. I got something to say. So after her hiatus, she decides to log on and address Jackie. This is what Chi Chi had to say. So Chi Chi says, Jackie, you should know better. Please don't give false accusations. We reach out to you multiple times and you did not respond. If it gives you joy to take us down, then so be it. But we won't tear you down, never. So in response, this is what Jackie has to say to Chi Chi. Jackie says, Chi Chi, I'll say this to you again. This is false. You may think you reached out multiple times, but almost doesn't count in her damn brandy voice, okay? There was one email exchange after my first review of your product, which I purchased. Nothing more, nothing less, which is fine, but don't lie. Then Jackie also says, also, you're not going to talk to me like you talk to Alyssa and your customers. I know you should know better is a favorite line of yours, but it doesn't apply to this. Now, kindly go back to your Twitter hiatus. You haven't logged on in a year and nobody even tagged you in this post. Honey, what in the jollof rice and moin moin is going on here, okay? All the Nigerians are beefing and going back and damn forth. Next. So, I mean, this whole situation is crazy. So then, of course, people are saying Juvia's Place is canceled. They're saying Juvia's Place is canceled. Jeffree Star has been canceled a long time ago, moving on. Um, so people were really upset. So then Jackie goes on to say... So anyways, I'll continue to stick to supporting and buying from all the other incredible self-made black-owned beauty brands who support everyone, not just use their black customers to get mainstream attention, then spit on them on the way up. So, of course, Jackie speaking on this situation definitely had everybody's ears perked up. That also um, made Alyssa want to come out, Alyssa Ashley, come out and talk about it as well. So, one of the main reasons people want to cancel Juvia's Place is because of her being happy and basically thanking Jeffree Star, okay? So, check this out. So somebody named Latavia Janae says, I heard you support Jeffree Star. That is so sad because I was really looking to buy some of your products. Juvia's Place replies and they say, Jeffree Star brought the product, visited Alter Beauty, blogged about it. We said, thank you. Can you please tell me what's wrong with that? So in response, another woman named Miss Bell Seven says this, this isn't about you being courteous or extending gratitude to JS for reviewing your product. And it's so manipulative to present it in such a way. JS is a trigger for many women of color based upon his public racist insults and disrespect as little as five years ago. That's not in the past as some want to make it seem. Furthermore, we see you for your works the minute you got acceptance from major white influencers, I love Nikki, so no shade. You flipped on the very people, your own people, who supported you simply based on the fact that you are our people. Don't dumb this down. It's insulting and a complete disregard to how our people truly feel. Do better. 
So people were really going in on uh, Juvia's place, okay? They were dragging her. They were calling her out for being grateful about Jeffree Star, reviewing their product. They felt like she's a big enough brand where she could just distance herself and not say anything, right? So then, like I said, Alyssa Ashley decided to get involved. And so this is what Alyssa had to say. Y'all go ahead and check this out. So Alyssa says, I'm tweeting whatever tonight. I don't care about the backlash, but people have been asking me, Jackie, and Naima to review the JP Foundation since it came out without maybe considering that the reason we aren't doing it is because the company owner is complete trash. So then to that, Chi Chi responds and she says, Alyssa, you asked us for products years ago. We failed to deliver based on your timing. You throw a tantrum on Twitter, it backfires. You come back crying for a statement from us. We say no, and that's the reason for all of this. Then you get blocked because we said no. Hashtag entitled. Then Alyssa goes on to say, she also sent Arnell an email because she trash-talked her for no reason, sent Jackie one, the list goes on. Basically, every single black creator that she didn't give a fuck to have a relationship with until she needed them for her complexion launch. We all ignored it, and then her ass DMs Jackie, begging her to review her foundation. I'm sorry, were the other content creators that you're constantly prioritizing over the black ones? Were they not available? I'm confused. Then she says, the reason we've all been slightly quiet is because there is absolutely nothing fun about putting all of this out there, especially about a black owned brand. So after all of the drama and people dragging Juvia's place, they finally decide to release a statement. This shit is long as hell, okay? Y'all go ahead and check this out. So Juvia's Place is saying, my name is Chichi Iburu, founder of Juvia's Place, and I'm originally from Nigeria, but I'm based in the United States with family. I'd like to start off thanking our beautiful customers who have supported us throughout this very long, difficult years. I'm honestly, very, I'm honestly a very private person, but I wanted to speak out and address some of the issues that have come up. The first issue we'd like to address is Jeffree Star's review. We are always excited when customers and bloggers organically love our products. Jeffree Star tweeted that he was going to do a review and we were excited. He then filmed and reviewed the product out of excitement like we do for all our supporters. We reposted him and thanked him, but soon realized that a portion of our followers weren't happy about it. Jeffree Star was not paid an outright fee or given any commission. As a person of color and an immigrant, I understand the brutality and the struggles faced by our kind. And for those reasons, I do not support any racist remarks and ill treatment of both actions and words made towards people of color, particularly black women. We understand there are disagreements, but everyone deserves mutual respect and love as we are all fighting our unique battles and challenges daily. We apologize to our customers. We only ask that you give us an opportunity to make this right. Secondly, we absolutely love to work with influencers of all races, especially black women, as this brand we created as an expression and celebration of the black diaspora. I personally believe in economic empowerment of women of color that are normally marginalized in corporate America. So at Juvie's Place, our very small team is made up of all women is made up of all women of color ranging from different ethnicities. Also, for the record, our foundation launch was our first full-scale campaign. And for our first full campaign, we wanted to make sure we included the very people whom Juvie's Place was created. We have not and would not ever ignore our black influencers. We hope to continue to grow and continue to pay black creators who work for us, but we can't do so without your support. Thank you. All right, that was a lot of damn reading, okay? I feel like I'm back in school. Anyway, so that's the gist of, like, the whole back and forth. Now, as we all know, Jackie is one. She's not going to bite her tongue, honey, okay? Auntie Jackie's going to keep it real. Um, and she's addressed stuff like this in the past. Um, here goes a tweet, a previous tweet from Jackie. Jackie says, YouTube is now who can be the most petty competition. There are so many kind, talented people that are being overlooked and stepped on. I rarely complain about what I do, but I'm over here working three times harder to get a fraction of what others get in the beauty community. 
So as you see, Jackie has been very, very open about some of the racism and some of the marginalization that black content creators that are beauty bloggers go through. You know, before, especially when you when you see a lot of these influencer, like, you know, get togethers, you know, where they'll take them on vacation and, you know, pay for hair and makeup and have them take pictures. Before, it was mainly white influencers. And if it wasn't for Jackie speaking up and fighting, you know what I'm saying? She's been able to pave a way for herself to be invited to these events, Alyssa to Ashley and other black influencers as well. You know, we see Shalom Black now. She's getting invited to a lot of these, you know, brand trips and stuff like that. So Jackie kind of paved that way. You know, so this situation is very interesting to me. It makes me sad. I don't like to see black content creators blasting and going back and forth with black business owners. You know, it just doesn't look good. Once again, it plays into that stereotypes that, you know, black folks can't get along. We're always quick to tear each other down. Yada, 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 okay? Um, now, as far as the whole Jeffree Star situation, I think it was kind of unfair for people to, you know, drag him into this and blame Juvia's place. They didn't tell him to go buy their products. They didn't tell him to review it. He chose to, and they were grateful. They were happy about that. I think where Juvia's place messed up is this. Now, I understand that, you know, they want to, you know, look out for the feelings of, you know, their fan base. But my thing is, if you're going to post him and say, thank you, Jeffree Star, and give him props, then stand in your shit. That's the thing that, that sometimes bothers me with people. Don't, don't then come out with a statement acting like you didn't know who Jeffree Star was. You didn't know he was problematic. You didn't know that he had, you know, racist stuff in the past. Like, this has been well documented. So my thing is, I would have respected them more had they just kept the post up and stood in their shit. Don't say that you didn't know that Jeffree Star was problematic, that him and Jackie Ina got into it in the past, and things like that. If you're appreciative of him shouting out your makeup brand and everything else, that's normal. At the end of the day, Juvie's place is a business. So if they can have big influencers shouting them out and saying, you know, praising and singing their praises, that's good for business. That's a black company making money. So I think that, you know, for me, I wasn't really feeling what she wrote in that because I think she was trying to act like, oh, she didn't know. And once she found out, they knew they were boosted. They were happy. And that's human nature. There's nothing wrong with that. OK, a lot of businesses get happy when big influencers, you know, what I'm saying shout out their brand, shout out their products and things like that like that you know what I mean I understood what that person was saying but I'm not buying that they didn't know and they were just being grateful they knew okay stand in your shit and say you know what yeah we understand that he's been problematic in the past and you know he said some racist stuff but you know he says that he's grown from that and he's changed and you know we were happy to see a positive review I think if they'd have just been honest about why they decided to repost Jeffree Star's review then I would have respected that than trying to play crazy like they had no idea girl stop okay you knew everybody knows okay about jeffree star's problematic ass past now with that being said i also had to call out some bullshit and some hypocrisy okay let's not forget a year ago jeffree star also decided to basically review and shout out the crayon case okay the crayon case was created by a black woman named supercent if y'all don't know uh you know she's the one who made literally a million dollars in two hours because her makeup palettes sold out so quickly. Okay, so she's a self-made millionaire. Uh, right now, she's going through memory loss. Folks are saying that somebody done put hoodoo, voodoo on her. I don't know, honey. But she's going through some things, okay? But anyways, Jeffree Star decided to do a review last year. Okay? And people were all praises. Even now, if you go to the comment section of that video, there are so many black women in the comment section thanking Jeffree. Let me go ahead and show y'all this. So you can see one of the top comments with over 2,000 likes says, supporting black-owned brands, heart. Super, supporting black-owned brands, yes. I would have loved you to shout out Super. Shout out to Super Sim from New Orleans for creating the box of crayons. So proud of her. And then when Crayola decided to copy that black woman's idea. Jeffree Star also called out Crayon for basically copying Supa and a lot of people getting props for that as well. Check this out. So Jeffree Star says, you guys can shop the original brand at The Crayon Case and support indie makeup companies, not Thievery 100. 
Then Jeffrey replies back to somebody and says, you can keep making excuses for a company that doesn't care about you. But the facts are, they completely stole the exact concept from at Supercent. And it's honestly sad. So that was Jeffree Star's response to Sephora and um, Crayola Crayon for basically stealing this black woman's idea. So I guess I'm confused by this, okay? Because Jeffree Star was problematic a year ago. Jeffree Star's racist comments have been online for years. Jeffree Star and Jackie got into it before, you know, before a year ago, right? So when he reviews the crayon case and shouts out Supercent, I didn't see this backlash. So I, I'm, I'm really kind of confused where is this coming from. And I see it's a lot of hypocrisy. And once again, it's that stupid ass cancel culture that I hate so much rearing its ugly head. So by this logic, should Supa and the crayon case be canceled as well. Because think about it, Jeffree Star went out of his way, spent his own money, tried the crayon case makeup by Supercent, and gave it, you know, Jeffree Star approved, rave reviews. Now, I don't know if Supercent retreated him. I don't know if she tweeted, if she thanked him. I don't know. I couldn't find those tweets. She may have, she may have not. I, I, I just don't know. But he gave her, um, her makeup a lot of attention. Hate him or love him. People watch his reviews. He's been able to build this huge following and a lot of big makeup brands really respect him. And especially when he like reviews, you know, indie brands and he gave Supercent a really good review. I watched the review when it came out and he gave her a really good review, a really positive review. And people were praising him. Black women were praising him all over social media. That's what's up. Thank you so much. So I'm trying to figure out where is the problem with him going out of his way, buying Juvia's Place makeup trying it on and giving them a positive review. Why are people so upset now with him reviewing Juvia's Place when they literally made a line that's going to include his shade range? You get what I'm saying? So if we're going to cancel Juvia's Place because they shouted out Jeffree Star, should we also cancel Supercent and the crayon case? So that's the kind of hypocrisy I find because in one instance, y'all praise him and y'all thank him for, you know, supporting black women and speaking out, you know, on, on certain topics, not all the time on certain things, but then on other stuff, y'all knock him. Now, do I agree with him disrespecting Jackie and, you know, the whole back and forth? No, that was totally wrong. Him calling her a gorilla and disrespecting her. I don't agree with that at all. Okay. So let me put that out there. But I'm just kind of confused as to how him trying on Juvia's place, not being paid, not being asked to do it has caused all this uproar and people being upset okay now as far as Jackie Ina and Alicia Ashley and the whole back and forth with uh Chi Chi I feel like there's some more personal things in the mix I feel like some more things happen behind the scenes that they may not you know want to really spill or bring out receipts on but it seems to me like this is just a little bit more personal and maybe what did bother them was the whole Jeffree Star situation maybe with Jeffree you know trying on their makeup and you know um a lot of people have been saying that Juvie's Place tends to shout out more white influencers I know they tend to post sneaky tutorials a lot on their page and they don't do the same for black influencers and I'll say this okay I want to see all black makeup brands indie brands things like that grow and prosper but never forget your humble beginnings never forget those young girls like my little sister and plenty of other people who ran out to buy your products and were sending you know what I'm saying your palettes to people like my mother who had no idea you guys even existed because they loved your palette so much okay so don't forget your core audience don't be so quick to you know go mainstream and then forget about the rivers and the lakes that you were once used to, okay? Because everything that, that glitters and, and shines isn't always gold. So never forget your core audience. Never, you know, become unappreciative. And I think that, you know, a lot of these big brands, especially the ones that are black-owned, need to reach out to smaller black makeup content creators. What's really unfortunate is that we live in a time and place now where some of the biggest beauty influencers are the ones who are involved in drama. Just period. Like people are more involved in makeup drama than even the makeup themselves. And so that's the sad part. So when you have people who just come on, they do their makeup, they do their tutorials, they don't get as much views. They don't get as much attention. But the ones who are dropping receipts and dropping this and, you know, beefing with this person one day, one this person the next day, they're the ones who get all the views. And now what's happened is that a lot of these makeup uh, companies are now wanting to attach themselves to these big drama stars. 
You know, like the Jeffree Stars, the James Charles, the Tati Westbrooks, you know, things like that. As opposed to, you know, maybe smaller influencers that only have a few hundred thousand followers or maybe a million followers. So the whole situation is just insane. You know, I just sat by, I sipped my damn tea. But, you know, I just find that really funny. So, again, since everybody wants to scream, cancel Juvia's place. And, you know, it, people do what they want to do. If you want to support them and buy their palette, you have every right to. You do what you want to do with your money. You don't owe anybody an explanation. You know, I don't think any of these people personally should be canceled. I think this is a learning lesson. I think that, you know, Jackie blasting them wasn't necessarily to be malicious. I think maybe her and Alyssa know things behind the scenes and they were tired of it and they want to speak out. And this is going to cause discussion. We need discussion. We need black makeup brands to take ownership and to be responsible with their promotion and to not forget the people who put them out there. Because three, four years ago, none of these white influencers were checking for y'all. They really only started checking for y'all when the black folks were saying, oh my God, Juvia's Place uh, palettes are really good. They're really pigmented. And then the cool, you know, artwork. That's what really set it off is the cool Afrocentric artwork. You know, that's what made a lot of black people gravitate towards it. So once again, never, ever, ever forget your core audience. Don't get so mainstream that you forget those who got you to where you're at. And that's why I'm going to leave this video. Let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on this entire crazy situation concerning Juvia's Place um, basically being blasted by Jackie Ina, Alicia Ashley, and people being mad that they thank Jeffree Star for their review. Do you think it was fair for people to get mad at them for thanking Jeffree Star when Jeffree Star has also reviewed other black you know, makeup uh, companies and things like that? And then how do you feel about the back and forth, you know, the, the beef with Jackie and Chi Chi and Alyssa Ashley? Do you feel like, you know, this is stemming from somewhere? It might be more personal than anything. Do you feel like, you know, they're reaching? Some people are saying that they're race baiting once again, you know, whatever, things like that. Or do you feel like, you know what, they have genuine concerns and they're right to basically blast her and to blast this company? And it's also been noted by Alyssa Ashley that she got a letter, she got a legal letter, and I don't know if it was a cease and desist, but she got a legal letter last night from them basically telling them to stop what they're doing on social media. But I guess they addressed the legal letter to her identical twin sister. So this situation is really messy. I don't want to see anybody going to court. This does not need to be a lawsuit situation. But I do understand Juvia's Place trying to protect their brand from two big black influencers basically blasting them. But hopefully they can work this out behind the scenes. Like, uh, sisters, okay, sisters. <laughs> and, you know, I'm saying come to some type of agreement. If they can't, that's fine. But I don't want to see this, you know, go to court and everything else. That would just be ugly. So, anyways, y'all, let's go ahead and get the discussion popping. Go ahead and leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts on all this damn makeup drama, honey, okay? Go ahead and leave a comment. All right. Deuces.